the Russians and the Americans started the space race, driven by national pride and pressures of the Cold War. But the world has changed, and so has the battle for space. The pressure now is to build smarter, cheaper, more reliable rockets to launch satellites ever more complex, expensive, and vital to mankind. Japan wants to break into this multi-billion dollar business of commercial satellite launches using the H-2A, their latest rocket. But this powerful workhorse has had its ups and downs. Now it faces the ultimate test. Two launches in rapid succession, a feat they've never achieved before. The second launch to carry the heaviest payload ever attempted by Japan. Has the H-2A got what it takes to become a man-made marvel? Over the last 50 years, the conquest of space has largely been dominated by the United States and Russia. But the combination of massive costs and dramatic failures put the U.S. shuttle program on the back burner, while the collapse of the USSR left the Russian space program financially orphaned. This has opened up the field to new players in the satellite launch business. Japan has spent 35 years building up its knowledge and expertise in launching rockets with satellite payloads. Now it wants to join the big league with the H-2A rocket. But it couldn't have picked a tougher time. Competition is hotting up between companies vying for the business of launching commercial payloads into space. Launch costs must come down, while reliability has to go up. The reasons are simple. Satellite payloads are getting bigger, more complex, and cost tens, even hundreds of millions of dollars, which makes failure a hugely expensive option. If a rocket fails, billions of dollars can go up in smoke. For Jean-Yves Le Gaulle, CEO of Ariane Space, the leading commercial launcher of satellites, this is to be avoided at all costs. If there was a failure, it will have uh, terrible uh, consequences uh, for our customers. And so uh, we are working to ensure the best level of quality in space. Of course, this is a cost, but this is a cost of success. Satellites supply a host of things we use every day, from TV programs to weather reports, GPS guidance systems, and international phone calls. Launch failure means years of lost work and functional operation. Which is why so much rests on the slender shape of the H-2A rocket. The H-2A underpins Japan's hopes of joining forces with two of the world's premier launch providers. America's Boeing launch services and Europe's Ariane Space. The Japanese bring to the Launch Services Alliance their very uh, specific approach to quality. Quality in Japan is a must, and the Japanese are very, very uh, focused on the highest level of quality, and this is something which is very, very important for us. But can the H-2A stand shoulder to shoulder with some of the most powerful and proven rockets on Earth? The only way you can really uh, clear the bugs out of a system, a rocket system which is enormously complex, is to launch very, very large numbers of these rockets, a luxury which the Japanese did not have their, at their disposal. Despite the disadvantages, Japan has developed a rocket it believes can deliver commercial satellites efficiently and reliably into orbit. So the H-2A is absolutely perfect for Japan for launching large communication satellites, uh, for putting into orbit Earth observation, marine observation satellites, and it has the potential to be used in the future for launching cargo vessels up to the International Space Station. Japan's premier space facility, Tanegashima Space Center. Located on a small island 1,000 kilometers south of Tokyo, this is the launch pad for JAXA, 
the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency's ambitious plan. Tanegashima Space Center is where their newest aerospace engineering marvel, the H-2A rocket, faces its toughest test. Within 25 days, JAXA plans to launch two flights of the H-2A, Flight 8 and Flight 9. Each is scheduled to carry a vital satellite payload. Together, they carry the hopes of a nation. Japan's ambition to have a high profile in space goes back half a century to the tiny projectile that propelled Japan into the space age. It was known as the pencil. Just 23 centimeters long, 1.8 centimeters in diameter, and weighing 200 grams, it was test launched for the first time in 1955. The man who used the pencil to write his name into the history books was Hideo Itokawa. The knowledge gained from his tiny rocket would influence Japanese launch vehicle design for decades to come. But the desire to prove that Japan could design and build its own rockets using only Japanese technology and materials proved expensive and ultimately ill-fated. Before it can challenge the technical mastery of the world's great rocket makers, the H-2A must first shake off the ghosts of the past. Its predecessor, the H-2, was built entirely from Japanese components and, like the H-2A, was expected to deliver a commercially competitive satellite launch service. That plan seemed to be on track after the H-2's successful maiden flight in May 1994. SLB, but this early success was soon rudely shattered. After suffering ignition problems, the second H-2 failed to deliver its satellite payload successfully into orbit. It was Japan's first launch failure in 17 years. However, the H-2 program recovered. It successfully delivered four payloads into space and was hailed as one of the most advanced rocket systems in the world. But then, disaster struck again. This $200 million machine suffered two launch failures in a row. By November 1999, the H-2's reputation was fatally tarnished and the Japanese launch program was dead in its tracks. Their ambition to enter the commercial space race with rockets using nothing but locally engineered components had failed. And at that stage, the Japanese decided to cancel the program and to introduce a new series, which we now know as the H-2A. The cancellation of the H-2 program is a stark reminder of the high stakes and huge costs of failure in the space industry, where tragedy can strike at any time. T minus 15 seconds. January 28th, 1986. Seven American astronauts prepare for liftoff aboard the space shuttle Challenger. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. This was the shuttle's 25th flight, and it would be remembered for years for a tragic reason. Good roll program confirmed. 73 seconds into Challenger's flight, a tiny rubber seal in its right solid booster would fail. The consequences were devastating. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. The fact that the failure of one minute component can cause such a horrific disaster is a potent reminder of the tiny margin for error in rocketry. The lesson for JAXA was clear. To reduce the risk of failure, their new rocket must be simpler and have fewer parts. And they had to find answers quickly.
There was a lot of pressure uh, put on the Japanese space industry to develop the H-2A quite quickly to get Japan a workable, usable heavy launcher back into production as soon as possible.